Welcome to r slash Tales from Tech Support, where we get to have a little chuckle at the technologically disadvantaged, like me. I'm Uncle Reddit, and have I got a story for you. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. For almost two weeks solid now, I've been working on closing in our back porch, finishing walls, working on ceilings, building custom bookcases, trim, you name it. Today, I'm finally done for a few days. I mean, I'm not done. Nowhere near done. But I'm done for a few days making sawdust. So, yep, here we are. I dusted myself off with the air hose. Yeah, such as it is. I had a viewer ask me today in the comments of one of my last videos uh, what microphone I use. This is the Shure SM48. I wasn't sure if I went with the 48 or 58 for the for this channel, but uh, this is the 48. Just a regular old dynamic microphone. Nothing special. I like the sound of it. Some people say the 58's a little richer. I don't know. Whatever. All I know is it's inexpensive. It works well. It's just a solid platform. And uh, if you're doing a channel like this, consider doing the old-fashioned Shure Dynamic Microphones. They work great. Production Database Backup Many a decade ago, whilst working for a software house, a client came a little unstuck with their database backups. On the client server were a number of databases they normally were named in a specific pattern, like software name underscore software or software name underscore client acronym for their production data, and we typically advise them to have at least two other copies that were named something like software name underscore client acronym underscore UAT and underscore TST. Now we could only advise and could not enforce on their suggested backup cycles and policies. We received a frantic call from the client one day. It had some server problems and it started up a new server and restored the backup onto it, but their production database was missing. So we obtained their backup media, a DAT, D-A-T, help me out down below, what does that stand for? And reviewed it ourselves, plus multiple previous days and scheduled monthly tapes. Each one was the same. Our software, plus the test and UAT database, but not their production database. Side note. UAT was a copy of production that was about three months old, but we had this process they would run that would prune and mangle all P2, so it was effectively useless. While some serious stuff was about to hit the fan at this customer, a savior presented themselves, in the form of a marketing bod who had just returned from an industry conference and had requested a backup of the production database prior to going. So with a three-day-old backup, they were able to recover their system and make any missed changes manually. Someone in their IT department got the boot. Apparently, with the production database also being backed up onto the DAT, it went onto two tapes. So they decided to remove one of the databases to bring it back to fit on one DAT. Unsurprisingly, backup processes at that client were changed, and they implemented a new strategy whereby they also restored the production database onto the back server frequently. That was an intense few days on the support desk. When I was taking night classes, I used to keep all my stuff backed up on a couple of thumb drives, and then eventually. I moved over to a uh, Western Digital My Book external hard drive, USB external hard drive. I don't know what happened. It was just some fluke, I guess, or maybe I did something stupid, which is more likely. But uh, when I went to get my backups because my hard drive died on my old tower, <laughs> I couldn't read either flash drive, and the Western Digital crapped out as soon as I started doing the actual restore. And... Uh, yeah, I lost everything. A stubborn, condescending caller. Short background story. I was working at a large BPO IT service desk company for four years. During that four years, we were a voice account, meaning we get calls to troubleshoot and as much as possible to resolve the issue on the call. We can also remote into the computer if need be. This happened before the pandemic of COVID-19. Fortunately, we only support employees of client companies, so most of the callers are calm and collected. The company is considerate and also employs senior citizens and usually works at home, and depends on their role slash job, they'll be using either a personal or company-provided computer. Main story. Okay, to add a little more info for this story, this is about being sent secure emails, because since the end user is not using a company computer and doesn't have yet a company email, they're being sent to her by secure email. FYI, if not familiar with secure email, if one is sent to you, you will have to log into their company's secure email site to view or read the email. Now on with the call. Right off the bat, the caller is already an irate caller. 
I was trying to de-escalate the call so that she can properly explain what her issue is and why she's already irate. The issue here is that when she's trying to log into the company's secure email site slash page, she keeps getting the message, session expired. Please log out and back in to get slash refresh session. From the error, I seem to know some causes of that, but just to make sure I ask, how are you opening the site? And she answered me as if I should know the answer. Where else? From the computer. From the tone and how she answered, I know this caller is stubborn and, and sometimes does trust IT support and seems making it hard on purpose. So I calm myself down and rephrase my question. I mean, like, how are you opening the site? Like, is it saved on the computer or a link from an email? And still in an irated tone, it's saved in the computer. For much probing of her, the issue is that she bookmarked the login session of the secure email and keeps using the link to view or receive secure mails. But, don't know if all company secure email sites do this, the login session lasts for like a few hours after that. We'll say it's expired and you need to access the home page and either log in again manually or reset your password. I tried to explain to the caller the issue and how to fix the issue in a permanent way, but she said, shouting at me, I'm not tech savvy, so I don't want to log in and enter my username and password every single time. I just want to click and get logged in immediately without all that login and password crap. I tried to explain in a way more basic way that the session expires every few hours because of security reasons, but she wouldn't accept any other way than the way she wanted. So I gave up explaining after like three to five times and just assisted the user in getting her password reset. All the while sighing as if the company is making it hard for her like every time, asking her to type her email or password before typing, you'll hear one big deep sigh and getting her logged in. I deleted the bookmark and replaced it with a new one. She did say thank you before hanging up. In my company, every Friday we get all the surveys our callers filled out and then submitted. From the caller mentioned above, she gave a negative survey because I didn't fix the issue and it occurred again. She had to call us back and specifically said that I was no help. On the good side of this call, went into QA and got perfect scores for both ticket documentation and call flow. I don't understand why people will find it so difficult to log in with a password and all that stuff. I mean, logging in is just not that hard. If it's your company's protocol to use secure connections and passwords and whatever, just do it. A favor for a family friend. It's late 2019. SARS-CoV-2 is making minor headlines on page 15 as Wuhan Respiratory Syndrome. Feels like a lifetime ago. With that, historos <laughs> With that historicity in mind, we can visit another historicity. The first is the client, a family friend's mother. She's very roughly a local Betty White. Oh gosh, we just lost Betty White. She's older than most of the town and an absolute joy to talk to. I got buzzed into the sheltered housing facility by her son who's retired himself. Everything's quiet. The occasional whir of an electric wheelchair, a faint smell of dog food. Someone did once explain that to me, but I've long since forgotten. And finally, mother, this is the man I mentioned. He'll fix it all. If you ever deal with a geriatric, you'll know two things. Everything happened yesterday, recently, or just a few years ago, up to and including both World Wars and the Apollo program, and you're going nowhere without a story. I take the seat offered to me and begin my, so what's the problem? In the style of the generation wiser than my own, she spoke to us both at the same time and in the same breath. A few years ago, Jerry here bought me a computer to replace my electric typewriter, didn't you Jerry? I love writing, stories, poems, accounts, and it's so handy to have digital text files instead of binder after binder. Jerry helped me type in all the binders. Over 5,000 sheets. It kept me busy. It's good to revisit your older work with fresh eyes. Now, if you'd be a polite host and get our guest a nice drink, I'll show him what's bothering me. A tea later and I'm being shown error after error. Invalid page faults, general production faults. The OS styling was old. Windows 98-ish, or so I thought. Then the big blue screen popped up and kept popping up. At this point, we rebooted or got stuck in the cycle of fatal exception OE. OE is an invalid page fault. A page was referenced, but not found anywhere. Driver memory mapping, buggy software, Windows 9X being crap at memory management, etc. I may have muttered, wow, this is old. And the son, Jerry, had said, it's more than a few years. Don't let the flat screen deceive you. That replaced the original old TV style monitor. I bought it from Rumbelow's in what must have been 1996 or so. Rumbelow's had gone under in 1995 and hadn't ever turned a profit, but some stores continued trading in a new name which was variously ignored by the customers as they continued selling the same thing. 
Okay, I said. Can I see the computer itself? You don't move an old person's furniture without asking. That's how you lose a hand or worse. The PC was nestled between a curtain and the back of the bureau. Its IO hardware adorned. Its black and red logo practicing a posmatism. Oh god. Escom stared back at me. I was merely a callow youth when Escom crashed and burned. A friend's dad had an Escom Pentium 90 which played a Star Wars game we all loved. I'm now an entry level graybeard and this machine predated my career. The Intel Inside sticker was red, not blue. I had a quick inventory of the hardware. PCI video card, S3 Trio based with empty PLCC sockets for more RAM, two dissimilar 72 pin SIMs, so it had clearly been upgraded at some point. CPU was under a small black anodized aluminum heatsink with a little 40 millimeter fan on top of it. Socket five or socket seven. With enough determination, this was possibly repairable, but there was no way I could source enough parts to do fault finding on it. Probably bad RAM. Maybe a weakening PSU. I didn't care enough for something so old. My theory was that it was bought with half the RAM it had, probably four megabytes and upgraded. The motherboard had the memory bus at 32 bits, not the 64 bits later Pentiums used, so Sims didn't need to be in identical pairs. The spec was probably sold with Windows 3X or just DOS on it, then a Windows 95 upgrade later bore out the need for more RAM. The old deer saw me poking around inside it and sat beside me. Is it just too old? I know a thing or two about being too old. Words are spoken very carefully. The computer had reached the end of its life, but these were not the correct words to use. <laughs> As some of the parts get older, they degrade, kind of wearing out. That's happened here. 10, 15 years or so ago, I might have had stock of some of them, or been able to get something in here working. This is a 1994 model. It's 25 years old. I don't have any parts and I can't get any. Of course it is, dear. Jerry bought it for my retirement a few years ago. What really concerns me are my files. Are they there? Plugging the hard disk drive into a USB multiport, SATA plus 40 pin ATA plus 44 pin ATA, and a mains to Molex 4 for power got it up and running on my Windows 10 laptop, which was entirely happy about the FAT16 400 megabyte hard disk drive showing it as a USB drive like any other. A tiny and glacially slow one, but a USB drive like any other. The time an ancient hard disk drive is most likely to fail is the time it's disturbed from its eternal resting place, so I made copies just in case. All the files were there, meticulously ordered WordPerfect files. This was non-negotiable. The final state must include WordPerfect 7. You don't ask a 90 year old to learn something new when she's been doing the same thing and meeting all her needs for the last few years. When those few years predate your entire career, saying, why not try MS Word? would have gone down like a bad case of coronavirus was about to. So we replaced the machine with a NUC and a new monitor because a corner CFL of the existing monitor had died. WordPerfect 7, which we had CDs for, does not work on Windows 10. Hell, it's debatable as to whether it worked on Windows 95. A quick search found people struggling to make it work on XP. I found a much more experienced graybeard. I have a problem. Uh, I need WordPerfect 7 working on something modern. Let me let you into some history. MS Office changes its UI every so often for no identifiable reason. WordPerfect does not. Find a copy of WordPerfect Office X5 somewhere. The UI hasn't changed since the dawn of time. X5 worked at least in Vista, so you've got a good chance of getting it going on 10. They did some changes in X6 which annoyed a lot of the old timers. That's a last resort. The requisite WordPerfect Office X5 was obtained. The requisite WordPerfect Office X5 was obtained and loaded onto the NUC. It took some persuading to make it work, and maybe X6 or X7 would have been a bit. And maybe X6 or X7 would have been a better idea. WordPerfect is very far outside my sphere of competency, but work, but make it work, I did. I found a tool to migrate quick corrects from an old format to a new one and copied over her custom keystrokes. But she interrupted me on that one. Oh, young man, you've done enough for me. I know how to set up WordPerfect. I used it for years and years in the legal profession. Her fingers merrily danced over the keyboard, striking various control and alt modifiers and using the right control key, a clear sign of a transcended power. Jerry, it's fixed, look. She loads up an utterly professional Christmas events program. I'll get it finished and to the printers in time. The joy on the matriarch's face was infectious, and within moments we were all laughing. They paid me about triple my usual rate, 
wouldn't listen to my protests. At her kind of age, happiness is all you have left, explained Jerry. What's money if you're not happy? Very true, Jerry. What is money if you're not happy? Now, don't get me wrong. A little extra cash wouldn't hurt, but having more money definitely won't make me more happy. There's something to be said for contentment. Hey, if you guys like this video, do me a favor and click this one here on the screen. I think you'll enjoy this one too. See ya.